Hey folks, well as promised, I built two more of our cedar and metal raised beds, two more of the four by eight raised beds that are in a previous video that shows how to build these. And then we also have the plans available on our website for $5. If anyone feels they need to hold something in their hands, uh, upload a, a PDF that has all the detailed plans with photographs and everything. But I thought we'd put them up here and I wanted them spaced far enough apart because I'm building another arbor or two and I wanted to arch between them. So partially we could have some climbing plants. But as with every speck of ground on our property, it's not very level here. So got our work cut out for us to level these. So the first thing we're going to do is once we're sure of where we want these to be, is grab some old spray paint. Now, if you're like me, you probably have 20 cans of spray paint on the shelf in the garage that you've accumulated over the last 20 years and grab one that still works. And the first one I grabbed was green. I figured that wasn't the best color. So I just grabbed some black spray paint. So we're gonna spray the inside perimeter of the bed so we know where they sit and then we're going to fire up this little mini cultivator and use that to take up the sod and then we're going to level and then i moved the old trommel the old soil sifter back up to the pile and we're going to sift enough soil to fill these we're going to then inoculate them with some good worm holding soil from our our beds that are are uh, have a living soil in them cover them with some chopped leaves and plant them so <laughs> feels like it's going to rain so i want to get what i can done here and let's get working Oof, so much for the rain. A few sprinkles and now it's hoof. Bright, hot sun out here. So I got the both areas that I marked with the paint. I got them pretty much cleaned of roots and prepared the area for the beds. Now to install the beds, we're just going to use a level and it's handy to have some, some pieces of block or rocks or something to put in the corners. And then just a, a small scraper spatula I use to work around the edges of the metal to, to create a, a bit of a trench to get them to get it level. So that's our next step. We're going to level our two beds. Now this is what I took up. So that's from both of the sites. So that's all going to go up into one of our compost bins. Why I didn't use the bucket on the tractor and make it easier on myself, I don't know. But this is where all of that material is going. So that'll be material, that'll be soil for raised beds in the coming years. So this one I got level by just using my scraper, this 
spatula and I just work along the edges where it needs to come down and then just cut a trench right along the edge of the metal all the way around. You hit a rock, you dig it out, and then just keep pushing down until you get you get level. You know, we're good this way. We're good this way. And we're good this way. Now that corner right down there, that's sitting at ground level. And I didn't have to do anything on that end. That's pretty much ready to go. So I just had to dig down on this upper end. So really on this corner, the wood is almost at, at grass level on the outside. But that's just how it is when you don't have a level yard. It's really not that hard to level. I didn't end up having to use any of the bricks or or the pieces of block or rock or anything in the corners on this one. We'll see how things go on the next one. Well, it's the next day. Beautiful day. 70 degrees, low humidity, bright sunshine. I finished it up yesterday and I was just not in the mood to, to finish filming. I, I was tuckered out. That was the kind of project where it's pretty darn nice having an outdoor shower. I, I don't think I'd have been allowed in the house. I figure I've moved, let's see, five of these I've installed. Well, Peg and I did, we moved the one into the hoop house and then built two more that we traded with the old ones. So then we filled those two in the hoop house and then I just built and filled these two. So I figure I have moved about 7,500 pounds of soil. Yeah. Until you do that enough, you might work off your, your uh, winter beer supply here. So, they're all filled with the sifted topsoil from up top. Now, if we were doing traditional gardening like we used to do and how many people still do, we would probably add some more, some compost to this and plant in it. And we'd be planting in the end product of decomposition, which topsoil is. It's the end product. It's done. Composted manure compost from your composters. That's pretty much the end result of decomposition. The decomposers have done their job and they've released the nutrients back in there. So we're, we're growing in a soil that we have added nutrient containing end products of decomposition to. Well, we don't garden that way anymore. We garden using the living soil method where we are adding the chopped leaves to the top of these beds now. And then we are making sure we have earthworms in there. There are some. I've seen some, both from the soil beneath and from what I hauled in here. But we're gonna kind of inoculate these two beds with the earth burn, earthworm laden soil that's in some of our unplanted beds. We'll do just as we did in the hoop houses kind of do an inoculation process. And by the way, those two in the hoop houses that we just added, a couple scoops of soil from these other beds are just teeming. Honestly, they're just teeming with little baby earthworms right now. So basically all we are going to do then is keep these beds covered with chopped leaves and make sure the moisture is at the point that earthworms are happy. So if we keep our worms happy, they'll keep our plants happy, which keeps us happy. So there's going to be some weeding, of course, but actually the weeding's kind of fun when you're working in this really loose soil with the chopped leaves on top. You almost kind of congratulate them in the first place for making their way through all of that, but then you just reach in and grab them and they pull out so easily. You just pull them out, roots and all, they really come out nice and easy and kind of gives you something to do besides just go and look at them. So that's basically our gardening method now is to keep our worms happy and they will do everything. They will 
break down slowly those chopped leaves. They will add their own worm castings. We don't have to buy them. They will add those nutrients slowly, kind of like a time-release fertilizer. It's going to be added to the soil as the plants grow. So, you know, don't take my word for it. We're going to have some progress reports as the season goes on. But we've done it enough seasons now that we are convinced that gardening with nature, letting nature do the job, is the way to go. Our forests have been doing it for 11,000 years without any human intervention, without any inputs besides air, water, and <laughs> besides air. Yeah, our forests have been doing it for 11,000 years with the only inputs being air, water, and sunlight. And the soil's never been turned. We go in and rototill and turn everything up and what does nature want to do? Open barren soil is considered a wound, like you get a wound in your skin. And nature's response is to heal that wound, to scab it over. And we call those scabs weeds and then we get out our arsenal of weed killers and try to control the weeds and everything else. But I'll save that for another video. Basically I wanted to show how we set these beds and get them ready for planting. Now some people, if you have a level yard, you can just plop these things down, put some cardboard underneath, right on top of the grass, maybe mow the grass short, put the, uh, cardboard on top, and then put your, your topsoil on top of the cardboard. And that'll work. It'll take probably another year because it, it's a little bit of a, a barrier for the earthworms. They'll, they'll eventually consume that cardboard and make their way up, but we want, we want to speed this up as quickly as possible. So we want to get rid of that, that grass and get rid of the roots from the grass as much as possible and kind of loosen that soil underneath and make it as easy for the worms as possible to get up. And the other reason, of course, is that we don't have level ground, so we have to take that sod up and level it down. You can see our, the tops of both of these beds, the wood is at the ground level. And then at the bottoms, they're basically sitting at ground level, so. But that's enough rambling, I guess. I'm gonna go plant and go get some short sun, I think. So until next time, it's Mark again with Backwood Basics. Let's grow in a living soil together.